Good morning. So our notes today are to see or not to see. That is the question. So our discussion today is about the human eye. And uh, yesterday I had you do for today. Uh, Mr. Smith should have given you an eye diagram for this. We'll also uh, have you take notes on some other things first. And so the first thing we need to talk about to understand vision is light. So light uh, is considered, if you've had physics, both a wave and a particle. But for our purposes, we're going to call it a wave. And it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And you see the electromagnetic spectrum here on the screen, uh, displayed here on the screen. Um, and uh, part of which are infrared waves, microwaves, radio waves, ultraviolet. But then this really small part of the electromagnetic spectrum are light waves. And so uh, visible light waves. So we can only see a really small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. There are other organisms that can see infrared. There's some theory that some can see ultraviolet. So anyway, uh, light travels in waves. And uh, you may have learned in your past Roy G. Biv red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And that is the order, uh, or some people call it the colors of the rainbow. And the reason they're in a rainbow is because each color is a different wavelength of light. And so if we quickly review waves, the length of a wave is the distance from top to top. So a red wave, like this one, is... 7 times 10 to the negative 7th uh, nanometer or meters. Zero, 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 4. Okay, I'm sorry, 7. And blue waves are slightly smaller. The wavelength is actually almost twice as small from top to top. That's blue at 0 0.000004 meters. So our eyes sense different wavelengths of light. And that's going to become important a little bit later when we talk about what happens uh, for you to see color. So if you want if you want to humor yourself, uh, you can do this color blindness test. Uh, a couple years ago, I had a, uh, I've had two kids look at this and realize they were colorblind. OK, and you try to read. Each of the, uh, there's a number or letters in each uh, square or each circle, and you try to read those. Or you can Google a color blindness test if you want. Okay, so what I want to do a minute is go over the parts of the eye and how they help you to see. And uh, as I said, Mr. Smith, the sub should have given you an eye diagram for this. Or if you're just doing this on your own, you should have an eye diagram. So part number one uh, right here is the cornea. The cornea is kind of the window into the eye. So it's clear. It's made of a single uh, couple of layers of crystalline cells that allow light to come into the eye. Uh, Maybe you've scratched your cornea, which means you have a, you've had an abrasion or something where you scratched the surface of your cornea. Uh, I had it once where I had a piece of metal stuck in my cornea, and I, I didn't really know it was in there at first. And then after my eye was watering for a long time, and I had a little bit of blurred vision right there. Um, because if you think of this, it's got to be clear to allow light in. Um, if you've ever heard of radial keratotomy, or uh, laser surgery, they actually shave the cornea with a laser because if you look at the cornea, if you look at the cornea, you realize it's bent. And so if you look at light coming in through a bent object, that light is bent a little bit. It's like looking through the side of a glass or looking through a window that's bent. The glass is bent. 
the light will bend a little bit. So the cornea bends light a little bit. So it's possible to bend the cornea with a laser, with a laser and make it uh, shaped better so light can enter the eye. You may have also heard of an astigmatism. I have an astigmatism. And an astigmatism means that the lens is rippled in different places. So there might be, I don't know if that uh, scribble does it justice there. But the lens, instead of being perfectly smooth, will have little ripples in it. And I'm exaggerating here. And those little ripples bend light differently also. Between the cornea and the rest of the eye, right in here, is the aqueous humor. And aqueous humor, uh, it's a fluid, it's a liquid. And it helps maintain the space between the cornea and the lens. This is also the cause of one of the leading causes of blindness. That cause of blindness is called glaucoma. The, normally, the aqueous humor drains right here out of the canal of Schlem. You don't need to know this part. And it drains onto my eye. And I wouldn't notice it because it's like tears. But in some people, the aqueous humor builds up. This canal gets blocked. The humor builds up and starts putting pressure back into the eyeball, which is bad. Because what's eventually going to happen is it's going to put pressure back here on the retina. And vision will be lost. So um, when you go to the eye doctor, they do these tests. If you've been there where they blow air into your eye. And that's a glaucoma test. They're testing the pressure in your eye uh, from the aqueous humor. Eye number three, the pupil. It's one of those things in the body that's just an opening and we have a name for. And all the pupil does is let light in. And you're like, well, I thought my pupil changed sizes. It does change sizes, but it changes sizes because of the iris. The iris, that beautiful part of your eye, either brown or blue or green or some kind of mix, is actually the thing that controls the amount of light. And uh, if you were to look deep into somebody's eyes and turn lights on and off, then you can see how the iris helps control the amount of light. Now, the pupil gets the pupil inside the iris gets bigger and smaller. Here it's smaller and here it's bigger based on the amount of iris, the iris pulls away and the pupil gets bigger to let light in. And the iris is actually in control of that. Uh, number five, the ciliary body up here, that's in control of, both, of the iris. And it helps uh, the iris contract and respond. These are, these are involuntary muscles. These are involuntary, so you can't really control how your iris is working. In fact, uh, one of the signs somebody's high on drugs is that their pupils are dilated. It's one of the things uh, police officers will look for. Uh, when you see on Gray's Anatomy or something, somebody's unconscious and they shine the light in their eye, they're looking to see if the pupils uh, react, if there's a reaction of the iris. If there's not, that's a sign that the person is not alive anymore, brain dead. Number six, the lens, and we're going to spend a little bit more time on this um, in class. But the lens's job is to focus light directly on the back of the eye. And a lens, if you've ever held a lens and looked through a lens, the lens actually bends light to a focal point. And the very cool thing about your lens is that it can be bigger or smaller depending on how close or far away an object is. And so that changes the focal point of your lens and allows you to look at things up close or things far away. So when you're looking at things far away, things far away seem very small to you. And so the lens won't have to bend light as much as when things are close up they seem very big to you. So if you put your hand right in front of your eye, your hand seems, compared to your eye, it is bigger than your eye, but it's obviously bigger to you. But if you hold your hand far away, compared to things around it, it looks smaller. And so uh, when your hand's far away, you 
don't have to get, your lens doesn't have to bend as much to focus on it. And as I said, we'll come back to that. Uh, part of the lab is to measure the accommodation of your eye, which is how much your lens can actually bend. Eye number seven, uh, the fluid inside the eye, and you'll see this when you dissect the eye, the fluid inside the eye, the eye is filled with this jelly-like fluid in here called vitreous humor or vitreous body. And it's like this gel, but it's obviously clear because light has to pass through it and hit all the way in the back of the eye. Now, every once in a while, there are little like parts of cells and stuff that drift down through that gel. And you may see those in your vision as specks or moving objects. Uh, but generally, the vitreous body stays clear and it gives the eye its shape and helps transmit light through. Number eight, back here, it's yellow on this thing. That's called the retina. Uh, the retina is superiorly important to you and it contains the light sensitive nerves. We're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about the retina in class on a future day. But um, you may have heard of somebody having a detached retina. That means the retina is actually pulled away from the back of the eye. Uh, you might have to ask Mr. Annan about that. Mr. Annan has a detached, had a detached retina in his eye from getting shot with a paintball in his eye, and the retina pulled away from the back of the eye. This is a very serious injury, and you have to do some interesting things to take care of it, such as lay on your face for, I think, two weeks. He had to lay face down with his eye down to let his retina heal. Eye number nine, and you saw this, uh, this is the white of your eye. Okay, outside the cornea, the white of the eye. And I've always found it interesting to think about why it's white. Why is that part of my eye white? And the, then I got the pretty blue, and then the black pupil well, the black pupil, by the way, is only black because the inside of your eye is dark. There's no light coming out of it. That'd be weird. But the sclera is white because light hits it and gets reflected away. You don't want light coming in all over the place. Your brain wouldn't be able to handle that. You need light coming in here. So the white of the eye helps reflect excess light away, and the important area is light coming in through the cornea. Uh, sometimes your sclera gets bloodshot. Okay, the veins break in the sclera and stuff. Uh, that's a sign usually that your eyes are drying out. But sometimes there's damage to the sclera and a blood vessel will burst and you get this red, uh, red tint to it or sometimes a red mark right in it. And it can take a while to heal. Um, that's usually not a very serious condition though. Uh, number 10, back here. In the back of your eye is the optic nerve. Now, it's interesting if you look at this that the optic nerve doesn't go directly out of the back of your eye. This is directly out, and it's kind of on an angle down, and it actually is on an angle towards your nose. You can't really see this, but if, I, if you look at the eye from the top, if this is the cornea and this is your right eye, your optic nerve comes off like this, and your left eye the optic nerve comes off like this. And that's really handy if you think about it because you need light to come in here and hit your retina. And where the optic nerve is, right here, is the, called the optic disc. Or also known as your blind spot. Part of your lab today will be to try to find your blind spot. Number 11, I'll number, I don't know why I have numbers on here. Uh, the number 11 is the fovea centralis, right here. That is a spot in your eye directly behind your lens. It's the center of your vision. And uh, if you concentrate right now on what's not in the center of your vision, you'll notice that you can't really see it very well. That what you're not looking directly at is a little bit foggy. And we'll talk um, the next time we meet. We'll spend some time discussing why the fovea centralis is so important and what about it.
what about the fovea makes it uh what is it about it that makes that such detailed vision and the rest of your vision not so detailed so uh, those are the parts of the eye that you have to know and generally what they do we'll spend some time later on uh, more specifics about certain parts of the eye